Hi, I'm Ed Share with InsoFast, the product development team. We're out here at a product test site to show off our latest product. For some of you that are, that are wondering what InsoFast is doing with spray foam, when we're the traditional EPS and, and plastic stud person, we got excited about the spray foam when the spray foam industry came out with new spray foam with a global warming potential of one for the blowing agent instead of between seven and 1500. So it opened up the construction market to foam that is sustainable and is going to do what it's designed to do. And what we have here is the brackets are fastened to just regular OSB. There is no house wrap or anything. So you can imagine your walls on the ground, you framed them up, you're getting ready to tip them up. You're gonna nail these on with just a framing nail gun right where the studs are. You don't have to be super accurate. You can just use the lines on the sheathing to put them 32 or 48 inches apart, depending on what you're doing with them. This is a two to four inch thick layer of waterproofing. So we're not just talking a water resistant barrier anymore. You're two to four inches of waterproofing. Plus you've got your moisture control. Your thermal control is continuous on the exterior now, which means you're about 75% more efficient depending on how much foam talking about putting in the cavity. Because once you get over R20 in a cavity, the performance of the foam in the cavity just doesn't work because you have the thermal bridging going through the studs. So if you have R20 in the cavity, you'll end up with about an R16 or so for the performance. Now, when you go to R30, you're gonna add another R10, but you're only gonna get R2.4 additional. So you lost 70% of what you paid for by putting it in the cavity. If you take that same insulation, the R30 and you put it on the outside, now with the dead air space in there with no insulation in the wall, you're already at approximately R34 or 35. You're in the passive or net zero house ready area just with one simple choice. Now, keep in mind, the neat thing about this is there's a trade to put the brackets on that can know how to run a nail gun. They can put the furring strips on there. Insulators can come in, professional insulators. They can insulate an outside just as easy as they can insulate an inside. It's in and done. If you're a builder in the hot climate, you can air condition your job site. You can put the portable air conditioner in there. If you're in the northern climates, I mean, you can put your temporary heat in there. All your subs can work in there and put all the rough ends in, in comfort. So it's just endless benefit after benefit. And when you talk about durability for homeowner, you're looking at something now, if you get a hurricane through here and it rips your siding off or it rips your roof off, you're still watertight in that event. And there's no loose edge of a plywood to catch the wind and flip off of there. So like the tornadoes, when you see the one piece of sheathing come off the next and the next. This is stronger and prevents that. Even the creaking and the moaning, you made your wall so much stronger by adding the foam and it spreads out the load. When you push on here, it spreads out the load. It's a lot thicker. The science behind it gives you so much more performance and durability and health when the more insulation you put on the outside, the healthier your home is. Now we're not just limiting it to spray foam. It also is designed to work with rock wall. So if you're a builder that loves the zip system and it has everything down with that, the only additional thing you have to do is fasten the brackets and fasten the house wrap on there. Now your insulator will come after the house wrap is done after the furring strips are on, and they'll poke a hole in here and fill it solid. Again, the professional insulators can insulate. You're not having to take your carpenters and teach them how to cut rock wool and how to fasten rock wool without having to compress anything. This, there is no compression in the bracket. So your, your framers and stuff will love this system. They're not having to snap a line anymore or worry 
if they did something too tight or not. This is what carries all your load. It's not just a structural screw going through eight inch of insulation, hoping that you hit the, the framing stud behind there. You'll notice a little bit more redundancy built in here. There's another layer of house wrap on here. So for those of you that like the building science and so forth, you have the cladding going on here. It's fully ventilated in the backside. So quick, easy drying. It's going to last a lot longer. Your paint's going to last longer. You've got the ventilated rain screen in here. So it's pressure equalizing and stuff. On a windy day, you don't get water trying to get sucked in or anything. It can, it just drains down. It's like having a double umbrella really on here. Moisture or water, if it did get in here, can easily dry and drain. 40 times easier for it to dry through a piece of house wrap than it is through another piece of OSB. For those of you that are thinking about doing double stud walls and double stud construction, instead of having a double stud wall where you're looking at the sheeting being on the outside and then worrying about moisture getting in, this just adds so much more of a safety factor. In fact, if you put all your insulation on the outside, like Joe Stabrick says from Building Science, there is no more healthier way you could build. I guess you could. You could use real wood boards now instead of plywood so you don't get any of, any of that in there and then you can, you can put your regular house wrap on and then your rock wool in there. You could also do it with spray foam. You can take that 1920s home and you can put these brackets right over the outside of the cladding and the siding, the ones that have the lead paint and stuff that you're worried about pulling it off. You can go right over that siding. In fact, if you go over the siding versus tearing it off, you're gonna leave 10% of our value of the wall in place. Plus you don't have the dumpster or anything in there. This goes over, spray foam goes in. You're gonna get that same passive house standard now for your air if you go all the way up the wall over the roof, especially that story and a half is a tremendous fit for this where you can get that insulation continuous all the way up. Now, the only thing you have to do is just tear out the roof boards from the overhang down, but you leave the tails in place. We don't wanna cut all the tails off. What we want is be able to put this extra piece or what we call raised tail for the trusses. We wanna do the same thing on those rafters and raise it up so then you can put your normal soffit and everything, but that allows you to have the ventilation all the way from the bottom of the wall, all the way up over the top. So now you've got a perfect cross ventilated roof where the air can go both directions. So those of you that are doing hip roofs, you still have ventilation. You, you eliminate the furring strips that go bi-directional in order to get that airflow.